Má byť celá dlouho, ale taká by bol. Speaker Ivo Beck, who will tell you something about how to assemble business applications. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, me as a developer, I keep a portfolio of my favorite libraries, frameworks, tools. Uh, whenever I encounter any new library, any new interesting framework, I like to experiment with it, right? I I like to create prototypes. So uh, part of my presentation is a demo, technological demo, where I experiment with uh, web components, Polymer, microservices using Vertex, uh, Docker, BPMK uh, execution server. So th there are a lot of tools. And so I've put together this presentation to show you an alternative way of developing business applications. However, even if you don't plan to write any business application soon, I believe you will find it interesting in web, develop, uh, in web development. So let's look at a business application. From my understanding, a business application should clearly serve its purpose. Uh, we should really know uh, the reason why we develop a business application because uh, uh, we want to automate some part of work for uh, an employee. So uh, the cost of the application should, uh, we should have the return of our investment in developing a business application. Also, uh, the business application, we develop it for our end users, right? So they could be effective in their work. So that's another reason. Uh, we should focus on the usage patterns, on the user interfaces for, for our end users. The business application, because it's uh, a it's business application, uh, there can be a lot of changes uh, for optimizations uh, of the application or uh, often the application needs to comply uh, some regulations. And because they can change, uh, we need to be flexible in that. Uh, we need to focus on it. Also, 
uh, today we can use mobile phones, tablets, uh, computers. So this application needs to run everywhere, right? And uh, also be accessible everywhere. Um, meaning by that, I mean, uh, I mean that even if you don't have internet access, which can happen, uh, you need to be able to put your data into your business application on your mobile phone, for example. Uh, so when we develop a business application, uh, we need to focus also on, on the resources, uh, not just uh, only about the budget, but also people and, and time. So, so it wouldn't cost us a lot of time, a lot of uh, people uh, that needs to make changes in the business application. Um, of course, from the business point of view, uh, we should be able to see how the business application performs. We should see the performance indicators when we do changes, when we optimize our business application, we should see how it influenced uh, the operating of the application. Okay, so let's now focus uh, on developing a simple web client. From my perspective, uh, 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 what I currently know, uh, I'm a Java developer. So I would use perhaps uh, JSF or Google App Toolkit. However, I also am interested in uh, JavaScript, but I'm not a JavaScript developer. I just see it like a very good, uh, very good uh, technology where there are a lot of, a lot of developers. There is a real power in it because, for example, did you know that every 16 minutes there is a new JavaScript framework? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, even new versions of it. So the development is really fast there, uh, but for business, uh, I, I believe we want to have something stable, right? I want to ask you, who of you would prefer Java for a simple, simple web client? Right. Uh, for, for a web client, yeah, when you want to develop a user interface, so for example using uh, JSF or Google App Toolkit, Yeah, I understand, yeah. So uh, I had that feeling too. I'm a Java developer, but uh, I would like to make uh, my very simple web client with J uh, JavaScript, but I'm not a JavaScript developer, and for me it's quite complicated. However, I found uh, web components very interesting because web components is actually a standard. It's a group of four specifications, uh, custom elements, HTML imports, templates, and shadow DOM. Custom elements enables us to create our own elements next to our HTML elements. You, you surely know HTML elements like div, span, and so on. So uh, in our example, we see we have paper toolbar. It's our custom element. Next specification, HTML imports, uh, defines that we can import our HTML document into another HTML document. Next specification templates uh, enables us to define a, a part of HTML which is not interpreted by the browser. So we can use it uh, really as a template. Uh, we need to use the template. We can just uh, somehow say it to the browser and it will interpret it. And the last specification, Shadow DOM, defines that uh, everything what's inside an element uh, stays inside an element and won't influence the surrounding, the other elements outside of it. Uh, vice versa, uh, the, uh, 
the HTML document itself won't, uh, won't change the behavior or the looking of our custom element, for example, the paper toolbar. Of course, uh, in case we don't really intend to change it, because uh, the custom element can be can be modified. Uh, we can have our, uh, we can set it by our attributes. We can custom uh, the looking by CSS variables. But uh, we will see everything from that. Uh, in the example, we have a paper toolbar. You can see how it could look. Uh, um, we just defined there that we want the menu, we want title, and other buttons. But all the logic, or, or JavaScript, uh, CSS tasks, it's inside of the paper toolbar, right? Currently, we have uh, more than 1,600 of repositories of web components on the page customelements.io. Uh, not every web component is a visible component. Uh, it can be uh, a component for offline, uh, offline mode of the web browser, so the page would work in offline mode. It can be, it can be anything which would help you with uh, developing your web applications. Yeah, what I could uh, mention here also is the browser support. Currently, there are. Uh, only two browsers which natively supports web components. Uh, they're uh, Chrome and uh, Opera. Uh, the other browsers uh, it's also uh, recommended to use are polyfills. Polyfills are just a JavaScript library which uh, adds the support for the browser. So actually uh, all browsers are supported by the polyfills. Okay, well, when you start looking for some web components, you'll quickly find polymer elements. Polymer elements are uh, divided into several categories. I won't go into detail uh, to all of them, but we will look at one of the elements, paper input, which we can use in our forms. So, here we see uh, all the groups in catalog of Polymer. Uh, the paper input is in paper elements and you'll find it here. Okay, here are some examples uh, how we can use the paper input, the attributes. Here is the reference. Um, many other attributes we can use there. Uh, what I want to show you is that we can look at a demo of using uh, the paper input. So when we are looking for some, uh, some setting of our paper input, we can find it here. For example, text area or password. And here we see uh, how it's actually uh, set, right? Here is type password. Uh, what I find interesting is uh, that, uh, every element has its own repository, so we can find easily uh, the implementation of the element. It's always called the element.html, and there can be also other elements, of course. So when we look at the implementation, we there see uh, the definition of the element. Here we have a template, uh, how, how the element is defined. As I said, the template just defined, yeah, there is some DOM element, but please also don't interpret it. It's just a template. So it's interpreted when we actually use the element, right? Uh, here in the template, we have uh, input, it's just an HTML element, uh, a lot of attributes we can just set there. That's, n that's all for now. And the element is tested, right? Uh, there, are, there are tests, unit tests for the element and our demo application. So we can look at uh, the demo page uh, 
be inspired by that. Uh, the nice thing about uh, putting polymers as owner repositories is that there are many, uh, many contributors. So uh, even if you aren't a JavaScript developer like, like, like me, uh, you can file issues if you encounter any uh, and put it there and so on. So let's go back to the presentation. Uh, all right. So what's actually Polymer? Polymer is just a library which helps us to develop our own custom Polymer elements. Uh, what I like about Polymer is that we can define our elements declaratively. So uh, there is uh, just a little code, a uh, little JavaScript code that we need. Uh, the important part is the template, which we have seen uh, in the paper input. And the template just defines how the element should be generated. So in our example of user detail, we want there uh, the name of the user, uh, uh, his email in a div element. And uh, in the properties, uh, we set there the attributes, the user attribute, uh, what we define there, it's a type of object. Uh, we can set there also the default value. For example, I don't know, some uh, empty user or something like that. Uh, ne next to properties, we can define the methods. Uh, which we can call on on the element and etc. And there we see uh, the usage of uh, the usage of our custom element. It's very simple user detail. We set there our user from, for example, from a list, uh, and that's all. Okay. Uh, we've seen uh, that. Uh, paper elements, particularly paper elements, use material design. Material design is just another specification. It, it de defines uh, visual motion and interaction design. Uh, uh, why I like it is that uh, it uh, shows us like um, uh, we get from it uh, the unified experience across devices and platforms. So uh, whenever we use the elements on mobile phones or browser, uh, it will change the behavior of the elements, uh, how it will look, uh, and so on. Here in the web page, Material Palette, it's a very nice, simple application where you just select your primary color and secondary color. And quickly you can see, hmm, how would I change it? Quickly we can see uh, how our application could look. And then we can decide, okay, this is what we want. And we can download the Polymer CSS uh, it's a part of code which we just can copy to our application and it will change the looking. Okay. So now I would like to show you uh, my technology demo. It's a vacation planner. Uh, as I said, it's, it uses the web components, polymer elements, or my custom elements, etc. I just want to show you how uh, how we can operate with the applications so you would have the understanding. Uh, then we would go into details how it was implemented. Uh, okay, the application is running here. We see we have two users. Uh, well, the Ernest is a user and Sarah is his manager. Uh, so as an Ernest, uh, we want to apply a leaf, apply for a leaf, and there we put there our ID. Uh, Ernest wants to go to Prague. The, uh, see how the page is changing, right? The animation. And we want to go there from Monday to 
Friday. We apply the leaf. It's being submitted and accepted. Great. Uh, here we should see our requests. Okay, here is the request, dear nest. It's our own request. The status is waiting. Uh, now we can look at uh, look at uh, why it's not approved uh, immediately. So uh, here we see that it's waiting for the approval of manager. Great. There will be some more more tasks to do, but we will change to the manager Sarah. Here we will see the waiting vacation request. We will select. Um, the request we see, yeah, Ernest requested for the vacation to go to Prague. Okay, here from there we will approve it. It's completed, and uh, here we see the team plant vacations. So everybody who is under under the manager will be here. Uh, here the status is approved, and the process is finished. Okay, that's it. So notice that everything what you see is actually a web component. Uh, there are web components inside web components, etc. Uh, 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 everything is actually dynamically generated. So uh, th there is no hard coded form, for example, to apply a leaf. Uh, when I would want to, I would just add a field somewhere else. I will show you in a moment. So uh, the same applies to the tables. Uh, they are also uh, they are also generated. I just uh, I just select which columns I want to show. Uh, that's all. Uh, so let's go back to the presentation. Uh, okay. The first thing we wanted to do uh, was to fill a form to apply for a leave. Uh, so. I modeled it actually in um, Business Central uh, uh, in Form Modeler. Uh, I just put there all the fields, uh, set the labels, uh, set which which, lab, uh, which fields are required, change the order, etc. So whenever I want, I can add some fields. I can change change how the form would look like and so on. The next thing, a very important thing, is actually the business logic for our application. I want it to be uh, flexible. It's a business application. We expect a lot of changes. Uh, we want it to have the business logic as transparent as possible so uh, everybody who is involved uh, would uh, understand what's happening in our application. Uh, and when anybody needs to change that uh, thing, that they can just change the process. In a process, uh, we see two parts. The top part is actually assigned to the user. The bottom part is for the manager. Uh, at the start of the process, we just uh, put there the data from our form uh, because we set there only the user. We get also the manager. Uh, so we call a remote web service to get manager of the user and next next service uh, next call is to persist our vacation request into a database so there is another uh, call to our web service uh, uh, after that uh, we want the request to be approved by manager, so uh, we wait for his input, and then, uh, based on the decision of the manager, uh, there is a gateway uh, um, based on whether it's approved to be set the status of the request as approved, otherwise as denied, and then the process ends. Yeah, uh, one last thing, uh, the process, 
uses uh, BPM annotation, it's business process modeling and notation, it's a standard notation for modeling business processes. So uh, you might have already seen it somewhere. Uh, it just not define only how, how we should model it, it also defines how every element of the process behaves. Uh, this is a project life cycle. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I used something uh, what, which I called Business Central. It's a business process management platform where you can def uh, when you can create your new project. Uh, in this project, you can set, uh, you can add your business assets, whether it's the process, our business logic, or forms. Uh, other assets like business rules, etc. Then we will decide uh, we want to build uh, our project. So we'll build it. Uh, it will create something what's called a KJAR. It's a knowledge Java archive, uh, which contains all our business assets. It contains process, forms, etc. Then it will deploy our KJAR, our knowledge Java archive, into Maven repository. Uh, uh, this cycle can continue. We can increase the project version, modify our assets, change the process a little bit, change the forms, uh, and other things. Okay, so we have our knowledge of archive with the assets inside of our Maven repository. Uh, and we want to execute them, right? We want to execute the process, we want to start it. So the optimal way how to do it is using a BPMK execution server, which is just designed for running business processes. For uh, We have there uh, process services, task services, rule services. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot of services we can use uh, to start process, to get a little, uh, list of tasks, to get a list of running processes, etc. We can also add our own services if we need to. Uh, all those services are available via REST API, uh, also JMS, but we will use just only the REST API. The only thing to make it working is to create a container. This container will have just a name. Uh, it will link to our Knowledge Java archive, the archive which contains the assets. Uh, and that's it. Uh, then we will have uh, everything available to run. Okay, this is the overall architecture. Uh, we have the, the vacation planner web application. Uh, the web application actually uses uh, the web components, polymer elements, and our custom web components. Kia web components and vacation web components. Kia web components uh, communicate to our BPM key execution server to start a process, to get a list of, list of tasks, to get a list of running processes, and so on. So we encapsulate all the logic into these elements, into these web components. Uh, the next part, vacation web components, those are components which partly uh, can use key web components. So we have web components inside uh, uh, we have key web components inside web vacation web components. Uh, also, we have their components to communicate to user management web service to get a list of users, as we have seen uh, on the front page, on the home page. Uh, also, we have components to communicate to vacation web service to get a list of uh, approved vacations, for example. And these web services uh, persist data to MongoDB, they, uh, they query the data there too, and, and uh, BPMK execution server, microservices, and MongoDB, they are all running in Docker. So those are the containers which we can, uh, which, uh, we can uh, horizontally scale. Okay, 
Uh, I was mentioning our custom key polymer elements. I developed <coughs> a few of them uh, just to see how, uh, how the custom elements can be implemented. Uh, so I, I was asking a question. Uh, what do we want to see on our web page? Uh, how we can, how we want to use it? So, for example, uh, the basic thing is to show just a form and to to send it to the server, right? Uh, so I was asking, what do we need to just show the form and start a process? Of course, it's the requester, it's the user who wants to start a process, is the container, it's the name of the container which links to our, to our Knowledge Java archive, which contains all the processes, forms, etc. And because the Knowledge Java archive can contain more processes than, than one, uh, we, we set there also the process, process ID to identify which process we want to start. And also I want to set name of button, so uh, I put it there too. And th this is the only definition we need to actually generate a form dynamically. The, uh, the, uh, I didn't say there anything about forms. And, uh, and it also will generate a button, button apply, uh, which will start a process when we click on it. The, the, there is no JavaScript, there is uh, nothing, uh, nothing we need to set. Uh, everything is inside. Right. Uh, the other example, get task list, is even simpler. Uh, I just wanted to show a list of tasks for a particular manager. And uh, not just any task. Uh, I want to show a list of tasks of, uh, to approve a vacation. So I put there a task name, approve vacation. Uh, that's not all. Uh, I would, uh, in the content of the element, I would select all the columns which I want to show in my table of the task list uh, for the user. And that's all. Again, uh, there's no JavaScript or all the JavaScript to uh, get a list of tasks, to get a list of variables, uh, etc. It's everything inside. So now I want to show you uh, the most useful uh, web component, uh, I believe uh, is, is good. Uh, it's Iron Ajax. Iron Ajax is a web component which you can use to communicate to your REST API. Uh, the only thing you need to define there is the URL, uh, parameters, uh, how you would handle the response. So when it's JSON, okay, I said the JSON, uh, and then I said the on response to handle the response, uh, I can use the content, for example, to, uh, to set some template. And that's all. Uh, of course, I can set there uh, other attributes, for example, a body. Here we see an example of that. A content type, whether we send there a JSON, XML, or other things. Uh, notice there is uh, boolean attribute auto. It means that whenever we change URL or parameters, uh, it will send the request again. So it's automatically sending the request based on changes. When we don't want to send it automatically, we can use a method called generate request. Uh, it will send a request on, on demand. Okay, so now uh, notice that there is on a response. What does it mean is that uh, we wait for an event, event called response, and to handle it, we always add there on dash. Okay, so in a source code, 
we can load how it's actually implemented, how we can fire our own own event. So no. okay. Okay. Here we have handler response. Uh, here uh, we fire a new event response. Uh, we send there uh, the, uh, the content for the event and uh, whether it will bubble to the parent, to the parents or not. And that's all. Uh, very simple code. Uh, as me, as a Java developer, it's, uh, it's very simple. I can use most of the operations like in Java. And uh, uh, only thing I had to learn was just the structure. How would I uh, develop my custom custom elements? Uh, do we have time? Yes. Five minutes. Great. Um, okay. So. If you want to start using uh, Polymer and web components, I recommend you to start with Polymer Starter Kit. It's a very simple application. I use it even for my demo. Uh, it has already some content, so it will just change your menu, the content of the pages, and so on. Uh, also, Seed Element is a good example of how to develop your custom element. So you can start always with it. Uh, the presentations of the first Polymer Summit are available if you want to go into details of some things. Uh, I like, for example, the accessibility. Um, uh, then there is the documentation and, of course, uh, the demo application, the source code of the demo application where you can find the microservices using Quartex, where you can find um, the processes. Uh, the Polymer application and so on. So since we are getting to the end, I want to stress uh, one of three important things. Web components as a standard. So use it. Uh, you will get a lot of benefits from it. Be flexible in adapting to changes. Show real usages of your common REST API operations and become independent on any JavaScript library because they evolve very quickly, right? Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay. Um, do you know how um, Polymer uh, handles uh, search engine optimization? Search engine optimization. Well, I, I don't know. It's my first uh, application using Web Components and Polymer. Uh, I was experimented uh, I, I don't know how it was. But, but because uh, uh, Google uses it uh, a lot, uh, it changes uh, their own uh, web applications to Polymer. Uh, for example, uh, the YouTube, gaming YouTube uses Polymer and so on. So, so I believe that there has to be some support for, for search, search engines. Uh, yeah, I, I run there just a uh, simple Python, Python HTTP server. Uh, you, you can use uh, any server you want to. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's only a JavaScript, right? So uh, it runs so everywhere. Uh, it's a dynamic web page because uh, you have there the JavaScript. But uh, did you answer your question? server or, or client? It's on client. Everything is on client. So in the web client is on client. Please. Uh, uh, the custom elements? Uh, I mean the uh, server. 
Yeah, uh, the BPM KS server is part of the product BPM Switch. Uh, it's also available as a community project uh, on, on jbpm.org. So you, you can download it. Uh, Yeah, uh, the, there exist customers which use uh, BPM suite uh, in production. And uh, do you have some? Uh, like me? Uh, oh, if sorry, I, sorry, I just wasn't, uh, I don't wonder uh, whether uh, is it uh, um, uh, powerful enough to how many processes Yeah, the, uh, there can be hundreds of pro running processes, you know, or, or even more, I'm not sure exactly, but s since it's used in production, and uh, you can scale it, actually. You can scale the key execution server or business central, uh, which can run business processes as well. Uh, so. I don't know that. Sorry. Oh. Any other question? All right, so thank you. Services, uh, protože já mám rád Mongo a uh, protože jsem používal JavaScript a tam jsem použil JSON samozřejmě, tak mě to přišlo jako nejjednodušší řešení, abych prostě to, to, to Jo, jsou to na sobě nezávislé projekty a ten polymer, já jsem to změnil prezentaci, ale není to jediná implementace, jak lze vytvářet ty webové komponenty. Webové komponenty jsou, jo, určitě. Webové komponenty jsou standard. Že? A polymer je jeden způsob, jak vytvářet ty webové komponenty, další je třeba Xtex, je knihovna. No, právě pro mě to bylo taky nový, ale vždycky jsem chtěl jít prostě tím směrem toho JavaScriptu, jenom se mě nelíbilo, jak rychle se to všechno mění v tom JavaScriptu. No, právě, že? A, te, a, te, a takhle, když se to vlastně zaobalí těma webovými komponentama, tak v té aplikaci používám potom jenom webový komponent.